Last week, I got the chance to meet a guy called Moritz who is absolutely mad about mushrooms. The aim was to go foraging for wild mushrooms. Look at these ones. Learn about some different species. It actually smells of garlic. As well as cook up a mushroom feast. What's the better like? That one? Or that one? That one? Or that one? Hey there, everyone. My name's Alex, and I'm currently traveling around Europe in my van. I've just spent the last week in Czech Republic and I've just driven up through into Germany. I have a problem with my van. Whilst driving earlier, two warning lights came on. One of my lights is broken. I think it's the one of the back brake lights. And also the engine warning light came on. So that's a problem because if the engine goes, then my road trip ends. So I need to find a garage to take my van to and get it checked out. Good night. Hello. It just rained like crazy. Yeah, I drove through it on the way okay, here. Yeah. And it was crazy. I, it was like really like thunder and lightning. <laughs> yeah. Look at this shit, I just bought this. Whoa, this is so crazy, like a lot of mushrooms. <laughs> I didn't use it yet. So are you a mushroom nerd? Yeah, I'm like crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mushroom. Oh, wow. <laughs> First thing I'm drinking is a mushroom drink. This is chaga, right? This is chaga. Chaga. Chaga lava, yeah. It's, it looks like a nice day. Like, it's really it's nice out, yeah. Nice it's been raining. Day. So the mushrooms have been feeding. <laughs> I'm Moritz, I'm 42 years old. I'm really passionate about mushrooms, <laughs> as you can tell. I founded a company that does mushroom drinks, let's say functional mushrooms such as reishi, chaga, cordyceps and heritium. We mix it with chocolate, with coffee and with tea. Um, so it's mushrooms that do, do you good, that are good for you that improve your health and I'm a total mushroom head. Like I go <laughs> foraging every day, I go into the woods, look for cool stuff and I also do photography with mushrooms or mushroom art as you might want to call it. And you have the, the best mushroom Instagram account in the world. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I do. Go do follow me. <laughs> Thanks, yeah guys, follow me on Insta. Okay, get it out, give it a little shake and then maybe, yep. Look wow. At this. Crazy, right? And that's all the spores. Yeah, it's, that's all the spores. Mm. That's how they, that's how they do it. And this is really tasty. It's a mushroom that not everybody would pick. It's nice with the light too. <laughs> what did you call it? A donkey ear. Yeah, donkey donkey's ear. ear yeah, looks kind of like a donkey ear. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna take some of these. Donkey ear. Boom. Mushrooms everywhere. Just ta -da. Look, That's so cool. Do, do they it, do eh? they sense that something's yeah they sense them up the movement? They... Yeah. I need to multiply. Wow. wow I've that, never yeah, seen a mushroom so do that. Crazy, eh? Our mushroom foraging just never gets boring. Like until today, I I never knew a mushroom could do that. So I caught some fish in Norway the other day. Um, cod. We're going to have cod with a, a mushroom crust on top of it. We're going to make it in the oven. So I'm going to mix these mushrooms with some breadcrumbs and then put it on top. And then we're going to have some pumpkin, like some grilled pumpkin, some pumpkin like mash uh, or like pumpkin sauce. Then I'm going to have a mushroom jus, like a really nice sauce that I'm going to start cooking once we get back. Uh, and we're gonna have some mashed potatoes. You sound like a good chef. Did I hear something about you winning a winning Shut a TV up. show? <laughs> yeah, like back in the days. What was it? That was Come Dine With Me. <laughs> back wow. in the days. Yeah, I mean, I used to cook a lot and I'm still into cooking. And it was more of a joke, you know. I was like, okay, I can do what they can do. And I won this TV show. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Amazing. Yeah, cool. So yeah, I like to cook. And I mean, the best thing is um, to find your own food and then eat it or like catch your own food and then it, I think it has a like more of a value to you. Oh no, it's a panther, uh, not a panther, a pear pit. 
Um, is it edible? Yeah, that's is it edible. Blush? Yes, oh, yeah, yeah, a blusher. Yeah, blusher. Yeah. I never have eaten those ones because I'm always too scared. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's nothing for beginners, I would say, yeah. because if you get, if you mix it up, then you'll die. Ringloser Butterpilz in German, and in English, uh, in Latin, it's Zuilus colinitus. And it's a very tasty mushroom, it's really good. The thing is about these mushrooms, they're very slimy. The, like the cap is always very slimy, so you peel off the top. And then it's a great mushroom that you can easily use, but this is really slimy and sticky. If you don't peel it off, uh, you'll get the shits too. So so this all gonna make a really nice sauce for our, for our meal that we're gonna cook. Mm. Yes. You found some? Oh yeah, I just stepped on one. Yeah. Nice. Very well spotted. When you cut it, there's orange milk coming out. Also your um, urine <laughs> turns orange if you eat a lot of them. So don't worry if your piss turns orange tomorrow, like you're not ill. So beautiful. But where there's one, there's usually more. So it's always worth checking the surroundings. Everything's orange in this basket, yeah. it's funny, eh? You would think, uh, yeah. there's just one mushroom there, yeah. but there's actually another one there's hiding underneath one. Yeah. Mm. Once you try this mushroom, you, this is gonna be one of your favorite mushrooms. There's like 260 species of Russula. There's poisonous ones that wouldn't kill you, but it's not good for you, and they get just really spicy. Yeah. And there's uh, non-poisonous ones, so what you do is you cut out a little piece of the mushroom, either from the stem or the cap and you just chew on it here you can have both <laughs> and then after a while it should either stay mild after like 15 seconds or it gets really spicy so after doing the taste test we know that these are edible so they're gonna go in our food tonight more of these milk cats with the orange milk that comes out. I mean, it's not actually milk, it's some other thing. Look, my fingers have got it on now. Orange fingers. Lots of people say they are like the nicest mushroom, so I'm excited to try them. Yeah. We call them Violetta Lacktrichterling. <laughs> Look how German that sounds. Violetta Lacktrichterling. <laughs> but they are so beautiful and they're also edible. So um, yeah, you can eat them. Thing is, you shouldn't eat too many of them. They tend to have uh, quicksilver and like they okay. capture radiation and then yeah i heard people so say like don't have too many yeah exactly but i love them i love how they look one is good this one and i think oh <laughs> <laughs> is that bad that's peppery <laughs> I think we found one of the poisons. Yeah, you yeah, have a piece. Of That's a big bit. Yeah, you take all of it. No, you don't have to. Take half of it. You cut it up. So, this is another Russula. Mm. <laughs> Sorry for spitting. Oh, oh, oh mm, God. Really spicy. <laughs> so peppery. <laughs> That's the test to see if it's edible or not. Yeah. After a successful couple of hours in the woods, we returned home to start prepping the food. These are really poisonous. I just saw this now. If you eat this, you'll die. Growing in your garden. <laughs> yeah. I want the right ones to grow here. Eh? Unfortunately, you can't choose yeah. what mushrooms grow in your garden, but you can choose what herbs grow in your garden. So I'm going to take some herbs for the, for the sauce. Rosemary, as you know. Yeah, I just want like some herbs in that sauce. <laughs> There's more mushrooms. Oh, these ones. <gasps> Shit, I need to get my camera. I always wanted to find these. They got like little, little um, balls in there. It's Look, there's more. This is so Oh cool. yeah, little balls. Yeah, what? Hey, yo, I've never seen them. Look, picking herbs <laughs> in my garden and I find like a new species to it. That's so cool. <laughs> oh God, didn't expect that at all. How cool is that, eh? All they do sleep, eat, repeat. Making the jus, I don't need to be too precise because I'm gonna 
filter that all out. <laughs> That's nice, you can just cut it up roughly. Yeah. So I'm gonna um, fry up some mushrooms, the ones that we found. Uh, and then uh, add some garlic, some onions, some vegetables. I'm gonna add some red wine and reduce it so that tomorrow or later on we will have a very good jus. What are you doing? He's sleeping in the middle of the. Yeah, he's always just rolling over. Mm -hmm. Do you want to see this? So this That's is... the tip of my finger, I just cut this off. Look at the white stuff. Ah! <laughs> I just gotta hold up my thumb all night long. Okay, I think I'm good now. <laughs> Not everything is going to plan. We found loads of mushrooms, that went well. The chopping of vegetables didn't end well. So you're putting some dried mushrooms in as well? Yeah, some bullied mushrooms, dried, because they have a lot of flavor. So I'm going to use some glue vine. <laughs> do you know that? Glue vine? Yeah, do you know glue vine? I mean, I've had glue vine at the Christmas market. Exactly, but I thought it actually might be nice because it has some, some cloves in it and you know, like some special spices. spices. Yeah. I think I'm also going to add some chaga mushroom. To give it like a little earthiness and some darker color. So we're gonna have a very dark brown sauce tomorrow. So we're gonna let this soak for a long time. And then yeah. tomorrow we will finish off the rest of the meal as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna the fish. We're and gonna do the fish, the pumpkin, the potatoes. Uh, kale. Oh yeah, the kale, kale chips. It's just a little topping, a little fancy topping. And yeah, it's gonna be really nice. It's important. More and more and more. More is more. Everything you can find in your yeah, kitchen. Yeah, just throw it in there. Whatever it is. Uh, maybe some coriander seeds. And that's it. That's my secret. <laughs> <laughs> After adding about a hundred different ingredients to the sauce, we sat back, chilled out, and let the saucepan sit for the next 24 hours. So that's my book. That's the book I wrote like three years ago. It's about looking for mushrooms in the woods and finding not only mushrooms, but happiness rather than just mushrooms. Then I got interviews with friends of mine that talk about mushrooms or talk about the forest and what the forest um, does to them. This is my book. Go get it on the internet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Down to the mushroom cave. Yep. Uh, this is where, where I do my mushroom photography in my basement. I'm working on this chess game at the moment. I built this. It's metal, good versus bad, or poisonous versus uh, non-poisonous. When I walked down into Moritz's man cave mushroom cellar thing, uh, I didn't expect him to have a chess game set up with mushrooms. So you can you can get like a picture in your head maybe. These are the bullets and then on this side it's gonna be the Amanitas facing each other. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> you gotta have a hobby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, before I photographed mushrooms, I was, a, I used to be, or I still am, like an advertising photographer. I learned at like a really high-end studio, like maybe the best studio in Germany. And a, a guy called called Uwe Duttmann. He's like an icon. And then I traveled the world for 20 years. Worked in, lived in South Africa, New York, and Paris, wherever. And like. Um, Work for big magazines like GQ magazines, work for Mercedes, BMW, whatever. Like, and it got me kind of tired after a while because I didn't see like 
I don't know, it wasn't fulfilling me and um, I turned away from it a little bit and like turned myself more towards nature and find, found my happiness with mushrooms. Yeah, I mean, I'm still doing my photography in, in my basement. I don't have a studio anymore. Yeah, here's where I get creative with my mushrooms. I also work like outside. Oh, that's actually wine from the wine that we have in the garden. I'm waiting for it to be good. Wait, you made wine? Yeah, I made wine. Well, you I'm have trying. some grapes outside. Yeah, I had some grapes outside. So I'm also like into harvesting what I find in my garden. That's actually wine from last year. It looks shit, but it's good. It looks very chaotic. I'm not a messy, I swear. <laughs> but you have to keep it somewhere. <laughs> Go upstairs where it's tidy. Too much time down here yeah. might drive a man crazy. Exactly. <laughs> Are you going to turn off the light? Yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh. Moritz actually sells some of his photos on an online store, so check out the link in the description to see them. It was now time to go foraging some more mushrooms for our meal tonight. Yeah, we found them in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> you can eat them when they're white inside. This one is too Ooh. old. Yeah. So this one, I mean, it's tiny, but we're still gonna take it. Yes! That's the one we're looking for. Well, we call it red cap oh i love this it's like one of the most beautiful and the, the best tasting mushrooms okay so it's lexinum leucopodium it lives in a symbiosis with these trees they are similar to a birch tree but they are not a birch tree i think uh we call them aspen yeah we yeah. do aspen and that's why we call this one aspen red cap ah. because yeah they live only where these trees are so i'm always looking for these trees and i love these trees when it's windy because there's a saying in German, like if somebody's shivering, you say, you're shivering like esp, uh, like esp leaves. And look at them, they're like really shivering like crazy, it's cool. <laughs> this looks cool. Especially if you look like for a certain mushroom and it's not just a random mushroom. And I was really like looking for, especially these ones right now because I wanted to use them in the food. It's the most satisfying feeling ever, you know? I mean, that's the good thing about foraging for mushrooms. Any mushroom that you find, it gives you like, I don't know, hormones that make you feel happy. And you're always happy. You're just like happy 300 times a day if you find 300 mushrooms. But then if, you find, if you're looking for a special one, it's even better. Like, if, I don't know, I can't really describe it. Can't put it in words, but it's a wonderful feeling. <laughs> Love it. That's yeah. another one. <laughs> Let me clean this one. Present for you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought mushroom foraging can bring a man so much happiness? We got two more. These are gonna go in our food tonight. <laughs> so cool. Some mushrooms just grow like aliens. They do. Whoa. Now we got enough mushrooms for our sauce. Hey, look at this. It's like the perfect example of how they should look. I always do this to check if they are still good. And also like push this, push in there. If there, there's like a dent that's uh, staying, then you can tell they're no good. But this one is perfect. There's like no maggots or anything in there. The mushrooms just keep surprising me. We just found a mushroom which smells of garlic, so we can add it to our food and um, makes our food garlicky. Pretty cool. Th is this the one? Yeah. This is the garlic mushroom. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's actually called the garlic mushroom. Yeah, is it? The garlic mushroom. It actually smells of garlic. Mushrooms are crazy. The mushrooms make you crazy. It made Moritz crazy. And if you're not careful, it might make you crazy too. So there's three growing in a row in a perfect line. And it's quite interesting, like the mycelium that grows underground 
grows around this tree, lives in a symbiosis with this tree and it really goes around the tree. We found some mushrooms over there, but this is like the perfect example um, if you want to explain how the mycelium grows, you know, like it comes from the tree, grows around the tree and it's sometimes really like in one line and then the, the fruit bodies, as we call them, they pop up and yeah, they're all very nice. We're gonna pick them, close this again so that the mycelium doesn't get hurt. Might get hurt by light and also by sun it can dry out. So it's always important that you close this again. Boom, three mushrooms. Boom, four mushrooms. This guy can talk for uh, months about mushrooms <laughs> if you leave him to it. We're not gonna eat those ones obviously, but this is more than enough for a little crust on the fish. <laughs> Just had a really good forage in the woods. We're gonna go back home now and uh, put together some food. Okay. Kale to make nice chips. There's a nice little topping for the food. And since it's growing here, we might as well use it. Have you had kale chips? No. Nope. Put it in the oven with some oil and some um, herbs. And they go crispy? Yeah, they go crispy and it's really nice. nice. Oh. Let's start cooking! So that's the sauce mixture from yesterday yes. and we're going to put it through a sieve and yeah. get out all the bits and pieces. Yeah, the mushrooms and the seaweed and the bacon and whatever's in there. Everything in the world. Cool. That goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, whoa, yeah. it's just so much flavour. We cut up a pumpkin, half was going to be pureed with some carrots and the other half we were going to grill. Next we made a breadcrumb mixture with blended up bread, mushrooms, parsley, lemon and butter. Ta-da! Breadcrumb! Yay! This was hopefully going to add a crunchy topping to the fish. Never done this with mushrooms. It's gonna be okay. Oh no, it's oh, nice. Whoa. Oh, that's actually cool. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it on top of the fish. Okay, yeah. Put it in the oven, and then the butter melts and also um, crisps, up, crisps up the bread and the mushrooms. I think it's gonna be nice. I don't know. Let's try it. <laughs> Potatoes were also part of the meal, and we were going to prepare some for roasting and some for mashed potato. Put a knife or like a, a stick in there so that you don't cut all the way through. Oh, clever. And it opens up once you put it in the oven. You found a nice little place to sleep. <laughs> she can stay in there. <laughs> <laughs> you go for a walk. <laughs> Pro chef over there cooking up dinner whilst I just sit here eating crisps. <laughs> How can you? Mm. Oh, okay, I think these are about ready already. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mushroom crust on top of Norway um, fish. Yeah. In a minute. To the grill. <laughs> Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Crispy kale. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. Oh, there we go. That's more like it. Light. Yeah. Okay, I think it's. Ready yeah. <laughs> what just happened, dude? Okay, the plates are not heated, which is a big fail. Mm. 
Explain what we have here. <laughs> Okay, so we got my plaster on my finger, which is really dirty. And then we got some really nice fish. I think it's cod that I caught in Norway. Then we got the bolete mushrooms. We got a, a, a crust made out of mushrooms and breadcrumbs. We got some pumpkin mixed with carrots. We got this beautiful sauce that I cook for 24 hours. A lot of mushrooms and all kinds of stuff in it. Then we got the mashed potatoes. Um, we got some pumpkins from the grill. Some other potatoes. And that's about it. First for me, as I'm very polite to hear. Mmm, yum. Mmm. Ah, cheers. 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 Imagine if it just tasted horrible. <laughs> it will, though. It's, it's got half good. your thumb in it. I know. <laughs> wow. I think the sauce is the best bet. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. Right. Well done, Chef. Thank you. It doesn't look nice. But it tastes great. Oh, that was some of the best days of my road trip around Europe. I have got to get these warning lights checked up on. Um, Moritz gave me an address for one of his friends who is a mechanic and he might be able to see what the problem is. And then I'm going to drive to Denmark, which is like a long way. Anyway, cheers for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one, coming soon.